This is a Zcam E2 F6. It's one of Zcam's flagship series of cameras. These are the M4, which is their cheapest one, the S6, which is the Super 35, sort of mid-option, the F6, which is their full-frame 6K sensor, and then there's the F8, which is the full-frame 8K sensor. And they're actually coming out with an F6 Pro, which I'm really excited about, looking forward to checking that one out. I think this is an incredible camera for the price. It's a cinema camera, a full brain style cinema camera, like the old reds or even the newer reds. And we're gonna rig it up because that's kind of what I enjoy doing and I wanna make a video about it. So let's go. So first off, the camera body itself. Um, this is this is the E2 F6, okay? So this is their one of the most expensive ones. It's around $3,000 new. You can pick it up a little bit cheaper used. Uh, and first off, I just wanna say, this is a little different to my normal videos because previously I've always talked about budget alternatives to very expensive camera gear. And this is a little different than that, right? This is a $3,000 camera. I don't typically talk about super expensive cameras. The reason I'm talking about this is because all of the rigging you can do for this expensive camera you can also do for the Zcam E2 M4, which I picked up one recently for $750. And I think it is a fantastic little camera for that amount of money. Very similar to the Blackmagic's in my opinion, um, except you have multiple options of RAW available. You can film in Z-RAW. Uh, honestly, I don't, I've never done it. I don't know if I'd recommend it. You can do ProRes RAW, which is what I do over um, HDMI to the, the Atomos Ninja 5. And you can now do B-RAW to some of the Blackmagic's external recorders, which is super exciting. I'm so glad that that is in these cameras. Just gives us more options, which is always a good thing as a videographer. So yeah, it's an expensive camera. I understand that. But there are budget alternatives to this camera that can use all of the same accessories that we're gonna be talking about today. So I hope you enjoy it. So the very first thing that we're going to add to this camera is this, it is a Zite sort of battery plate that just attaches to the back of this camera. This thing is an absolute must for this camera. On the back of this camera, there is a NPF battery plate, which is fantastic that this uses external NPF batteries. So cheap, so such fantastic good capacity and just really easy to use. Um, so absolutely fantastic. But honestly, the, the plate itself and the pins down here are kind of fragile. Whereas this is about $40 and you can attach it to the back of this with four small screws. Um, and it takes up no space at all. Um, but what it does is it protects the, the battery pins on your camera by adding external ones. What this means is if you damage the battery plate, um, all you have to do is replace this external one you don't need to worry about not being able to use uh, the camera at all um, because you've ruined your battery plate. So honestly, if you have a Zcam and you don't own one of these, please just go buy one. Um, I do have affiliate links down below for all the stuff we're talking about today. You don't need to use the affiliate, affiliate links if you don't want to, but this is an absolute lifesaver. Um, and I've seen far too many people on the Facebook pages have broken their battery plates on this camera. And at that point you have to rely on external power and it can become kind of useless. So this is the very first thing we do is we attach this to the camera. Next, we're going to add a cage. I'm using the small rig cage and the design designed for this camera. There's many other cages you can choose from like Tilta have an option, 8SIN have one, which actually looks really cool because it's got tons and tons of mounting points. Um, Condor Blue have one, all this kind of stuff. The reason I'm using the small rig one is because it's very affordable, but it also can accommodate this handle. Now this handle is so cool. I don't know why it is as cool as it is. I just really enjoy it. It's based off of an old Derringer handle. It's actually designed for Red Komodos and by Global Dynamics United by GDU. And it is a beautiful handle. I think it fits on here super, super well. It's not designed for this. It's sort of supposed to be proprietary, but it fits on this cage nicely with a three eighths and a quarter 20 screw. Now this handle is incredibly expensive. Um, it is about $250 or something like that, which is extortionate. I don't recommend you spend that much money on a wooden handle unless you have problems like I do. Um, I actually found this one used on B&H for like $90. And at that point, which is still a lot of money for a wooden handle, $90 is a lot. But at that point I was like, I gotta get it. It's just too beautiful. I love it. It just makes me happy. So uh, also I've attached a cold shoe mount on the front here. So we're gonna go ahead and attach this to the camera. Next, we are going to add this, which is a small NATO rail with a 15 millimeter rail attachment. Um, and we're gonna attach this to the top with two screws, again, just to add a bit of stability. And that means that the, the top handle that we're gonna attach to this is not gonna wiggle around. It's not gonna move. And um, it just keeps it nice and sturdy. And this one, um, if you don't want to attach it to a base plate um, with 15 millimeter rails, it adds um, an attachment on the top that you can add a 15 millimeter rail without having to build a whole base plate on the bottom. I like to have the versatility of that so I can choose to put it on the top if I want to, 
or I can have this sort of full rig with the rails on the bottom. It's just nice to have options like that and it doesn't really get in the way. So we have that NATO rail right there. I'm gonna use this top handle, which is uh, by Nicey Rig. It's a cool little top handle. Um, it just feels really good in the hands, it's super comfortable. And that just slides onto the NATO rail on the top. It's a very snug fit because of this uh, on the top here. So alternatively, if you don't have this cool shoe, you can actually attach one to this handle and it fits very nicely. Um, I like to use this one here because it keeps it more low profile. It just keeps it a little bit neater in my opinion. Then you can take your monitor mount of choice. And um, this one is by, I don't know who this one's by. This one is by Vlogger. I don't know what that one is. I think that's Andy Sinning make Vlogger. Um, so a little uh, monitor mount and attach it on the front. And there are many companies that make really good monitor mounts. You just need to get a decent one, one that's not gonna break, but also one that's not gonna break the bank. Find somewhere in the middle. They're usually around 30 to $40. Kind of expensive, but you're putting a more expensive monitor on it. So you maybe wanna make sure that it's a decent one. Um, and there we have it. And lastly, to get this kind of shoot ready, we're gonna to have to attach a lens. So this is the Makey Full Frame Cine Lenses. They're beautiful, beautiful lenses. They're some of my favorite lenses to use. They feel fantastic in the hands, but they're also um, just super, super high quality. So a good lens on the front and stick a battery in the back. Um, your monitor of choice. I'm gonna use the Ninja V because it's got external recording capabilities. So this camera uses CFast cards, which are incredibly expensive. I know that they're kind of like an industry, industry standard and people say that they're worth the money and that's probably true. I don't use them because for me, it's just too much money. When I could also buy, I could buy a Ninja V for the same price as like just one card and then just stick, to, um, you know, two terabytes of storage into this and record externally and also get ProRes RAW externally, which is better than the ProRes built into the camera. So if, to me, it's just kind of no brainer and that just works really well. And here we have a very minimal small rig for this camera. I realize it's quite big, relatively heavy because this lens is very hefty and the whole camera is made out of metal, but this is a really nice start. Okay, this is kind of like my smallest rig when I'm not using my phone and smaller lenses. This is still a very impressive rig uh, and will do really well on set. It's light enough that you could get it on a decent sized gimbal. Um, but also heavy enough that if you're going handheld, it's not gonna have loads of those micro jitters. But of course, because we have problems, we're going to build this up to be much bigger. Now for base plates, there are two main options you can go with. There is this one, which is one of my favorites by Nitsi. It is actually a quick release one. We're gonna talk about more, this more in a second. And then there are sort of more uh, budget friendly, generic, sort of small rig, classic style base plates. Um, these are much more affordable um, and do the exact same thing, except this one has a quick, quick release system. So if you want to go from a big rig to something more like this, it can just pop straight off. So if you like versatility, go with something like this. It's a little more expensive. If you don't care about versatility and maybe want something a little more low profile, this is really good. Um, so, I mean, you definitely can't go wrong with either of these. It just depends on your budget and kind of what you're wanting it to do. For this rig, I'm gonna use the quick release one just cause it's designed for this camera. Um, just so you can kind of see what it's like. I actually prefer this one because it's lower profile. It keeps the rails closer to the camera, which I just personally prefer. So the nice thing about this one by Nitsi is it's got this little quick release clamp, which unlocks this, which is a really small little um, Manfrotto style quick release plate. I actually, I really like this one. It fits on the cages perfectly and it lines up really nicely underneath. The only problem with it is, is it's very thin, so it won't work on every single tripod or gimbal. Um, it's very short and it's very thin, so it's definitely more for like, if you're wanting this to go from a gimbal to the big rig, I don't know if this is necessarily gonna work, um, but it's a really nice system. So we're gonna go ahead and install it. This just attaches on the bottom of the camera rig with again, two screws. I'm gonna use one quarter inch and one three eighths um, just to make sure that it is nice and stable um, in the rig. So now we do have a quick release plate on the bottom of this rig itself, the smaller rig. And then we can, if we want to, we can attach it super easily to a base plate. So here we have two eight inch rails. Um, right in the middle, I have a rosette mount attached that is gonna attach a handle later. Um, and these will just slide directly into the Nitsi base plate. Should go in nice and snug. And you can obviously loosen them up and get that all attached. Tighten them down. And we kind of have the sort of framework for the base of our camera. Now, typically what I'll do is I will add another quick release plate to the bottom of this. Uh, this quick release plate in particular is my favorite. It comes with the small rig tripod, their fluid head. It has space to hide some Allen wrenches, which is fantastic. There's a video for that and just linked down below. 
So we're going to go ahead and attach this to the base plate of the camera. And this way, if we do want to attach this to a tripod, um, we can just go straight from tripod to handheld. And it also adds a little bit of a platform at the bottom um, to sort of make sure that the camera stays level. It kind of bothers me whenever you like, like what this is currently doing. I'd like it to sit flat. It doesn't because it is front heavy. So um, having a sort of larger plate on the bottom as a little bit more surface area means it's less likely to sort of tip around, which is really handy. So this rosette mount is actually going to be used for a tilt -a side focus handle. This tilt -a side focus handle is just fantastic. It works super well for me and it can attach right to the base plate. And so the motor that attaches to the handle can slide right on here. We'll um, attach this to the lens in a little bit. So now we have our base plate, we have our sort of handheld rig without the base plate. And thanks to the quick release system, we can actually just go ahead, slide this right on there, lock it into place. And there we have our rig and it, it works. It's just there, it's working just great. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the clearance here, not the end of the world. Um, it still works fantastically. I have solid handles on both sides, one that I can pull focus with, one that just looks beautiful and works really well. Um, I'll leave an alternative, nice looking wooden handle in the description um, if you're wanting something a little bit cheaper. And I've got a top handle that I can carry around. Now, when I have a bigger rig like this, I don't want to use NPF batteries. I'm gonna use a couple of different things. So here we have a few little um, final touches. I've taken the NPF battery off the back because with a larger rig, I'm actually gonna to want to use V-mount batteries for a couple of reasons, larger capacity, They've got D-tap ports and um, it balances out the rig. Whenever all this stuff is on, it still gets a little front heavy. So having a larger battery on the back just helps with balance. First off, the old matte box. You gotta put a matte box on the front, mainly because it looks cooler. Secondary is to block some light, but let's be real. It's mainly to look cooler and um, we can pretend like it's for other reasons. Um, but realistically, if you're using these smaller cheap ones, it's just to look cool. And it works. Now to add V-mount batteries to the back of this camera, we're actually going to use this. This is a really cheap generic um, little NPF to V-mount adapter. And um, these are absolutely incredible. I've ordered about five of these because the amount of things that I use that use NPF that I'd maybe like to use a V-mount battery on, whether it's monitors, lights, cameras, things like that. This is just fantastic. And with this battery plate on the back from, um, from Zete, you can add this on the back and it doesn't get in the way of any of the ports. So typically if you add this straight onto the camera, it's a little bit too close um, and you can't access the HDMI port, you can't access any of the power ports. Um, but with this Zete port on the back, which kind of sets it out a little bit farther, there's enough clearance to get sort of smaller HDMI cables in here, but also um, to put a V-mount battery on the back. So we're gonna take our V-mount battery. This is a really small little um, V-mount battery by uh, came TV. They're very popular, really cheap, um, comparatively cheap. They're, you know, they're not as cheap as the NPF batteries, but for V-mount batteries, they're pretty affordable. That just pops onto the back. And now we have a pretty good looking rig. Um, it's much more balanced. It's nice and even. It's a little bit front heavy still. So if you really want to be particular, you might want to stick a larger battery on the back. Um, I kind of like the small one because it's more low profile. Works really well for me. And lastly, we just got to run some cables. So the first couple of things we're going to run is actually the, I have this, which is a, another uh, Andy Cine product. It is a NPF 550, 550 dummy battery to a uh, D-tap. Now, most people are going to run this to the monitor. I'm not going to do that. I'll tell you why in a couple of minutes. This one actually plugs right into the battery plate that we have on the back here. And I'm going to actually put it into this side handle because this side handle requires power. Now I have a battery that can power the handle and it can power the camera itself. So I'm not gonna use the V-mount battery to power the monitor. And there's a couple of reasons. Um, whenever you power the camera and the monitor from the same battery, you have to be pretty careful. You can short out the HDMI cable um, and the HDMI port in your camera if you power things on in the wrong order, or if you, especially if you power them on at the same time, it'll cause a surge to go from one device to the other and it can fry the HDMI port in your camera leaving you um, with a useless camera, in my opinion, because it's got no built-in monitor and you're gonna have to rely on just a phone. So we're gonna plug in the HDMI cable and run that over to the monitor. And for the monitor itself, we're actually just gonna power it separately. This just adds a little bit of protection. I know it's kind of a hassle. It means you have to carry two different types of batteries around, um, unless you're not using uh, V-mount batteries. You could just use NPF for both. So for me, we actually use these as live streaming cameras for our church. We mainly use the M4s. We've got a couple of those. Um, and for me, 
it just get, brings me a little bit more comfort knowing that I'm not going to short out my HDMI port because um, I'm not actually operating these cameras very often. We have a switcher and we've got two camera operators and some of them are not very experienced, some of them are. And just to free me from any hassle of worrying that I'm going to short out my HDMI port, to me it's just easier, external battery, and we're good to go. Um, now, if I'm using it on a shoot and I'm confident in myself and I want to just use one battery, I might run a D-tap over to this or I might use one of the power outs of the camera to go into the monitor. But most of the time, it just brings me a little bit more comfort knowing that I'm far less likely. It's just something that I don't have to stress about. And when you're on set and you're busy and you're trying to get a production done, removing some stress um, at the sacrifice of having to add one more battery to a different device to me is totally worth it. I just didn't want to have to buy a whole new camera because I did something dumb, which I can be prone to do. So for me, this just works really well. And that's kind of it. Here we have a really cool big Zcam rig. You've got your wireless follow focus. Um, you've got your follow focus at the tip of your finger. You got a nice, good, good looking handle on the side. V-mount battery in the back that powers both the camera and the follow focus. An external recorder, matte box, all the bells and whistles. It looks really cool, it feels good, it looks impressive, and it's a great camera. Um, the quality that comes out of this camera, especially the F6, is fantastic. Um, full frame does have a, a look to it that Super 35 and Micro Four Thirds doesn't have. You're paying for it, it's obviously a lot more expensive, um, and I really do think that the S6 and the M4 are phenomenal cameras for the price. Um, I'm actually picking up an S6 this coming week for about $1,200, um, and we picked up an M4 for $750. So, you know, uh, they're, they're really good cameras, they're really enjoyable to use. They're relatively affordable compared to some of the competition like the Komodos or, or other options like that. Um, so if you have one of these cameras, you want to build a rig, this is a fun one. I actually think it's pretty affordable for the price of the camera. Um, it doesn't use any super crazy expensive parts. Um, like this battery plate is like 30, 40 bucks. Um, the Atomos is probably the most expensive thing, but overall it's very much worth it because if you're not using this, you're using CFast cards and they're even more expensive than the monitor itself. So this is my rig. I wanna know what you think about it. Do you think it's cool? Do you like it? What are some of the issues? I wanna hear your thoughts down below. Just let me know um, and let me know what you think of this rig build. If you're interested in Zcam uh, cameras, let me know because I'd love to make more content about them. They actually make incredible live streaming cameras um, for the price. And uh, I'm not including any footage really in this video, but I certainly can. We can talk a lot more about it. Again, this camera in particular is far more expensive than most of the cameras that I recommend, so I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on it um, other than the rig itself. So let me know in the comments down below, do you want to see more footage about Zcam, Blackmagic, sort of cinema camera style? Or are you more interested in seeing how you can get cinema style quality from cheap cameras like the Sony a6000 or a Sony ZV-E10, cameras like that? Let me know in the comments down below, maybe hit the subscribe button while you're down there, and I hope you have a wonderful day.